guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if it's your first time here. Thanks for stopping by. I am going to be filming an empties video. I do these all the time. I go through a lot of products. Let's dive in. I seriously go through so many items. I feel like I upload empties videos all the time, but I don't know, I have this weird fixation with using products up. Even if they're not that great, but then I try to declutter. I don't know. I'm gonna stop rambling and we're just gonna dive in. I don't have a ton, but I have a fair amount. We'll start with candles because I've realized I'm an actual candle psychopath. Like, it's actually out of control. So I burn a lot every month, every season, every everything. Most of mine are Bath and Body Works because they have great seasonal ones, but these two are not. The first one is from Trader Joe's actually, and it was the Vanilla Pumpkin Scented Candle. So this guy I burned throughout like October. It was just in the kitchen. I like to have a little single wick or smaller candle on my stove for when I cook throughout the month. It was good, but it wasn't the best, but it was cheap. Here was one from Target. Just a little pumpkin spice jar. This smelled nice. It was from like the dollar spot, I think. It was maybe five bucks and it just didn't burn that cleanly. So, eh. Then I have all my Bath and Body Works. So I have cinnamon. This one is awesome. It's from the Essential Oils Collection. They're really, really like strong, good, clean smells. By clean, I mean like whatever it is. If it's cinnamon, if it's eucalyptus, if it's, I have a peppermint one, they smell just like that thing and nothing really else. It's just like a crisp, clean version of whatever the scent is. So cinnamon, this one was vanilla pumpkin marshmallow. Nice and sweet, good during um, October. It smelled like candy corn. This I put in a favorites video. It's a cinnamon pretzel twist and it legitimately smells like baked pretzels. It's crazy. It's a good one. This guy's also really good and has really pretty packaging. This is cinnamon spiced vanilla. Such a nice like fall or really all year round scent. Loved this. Okay, on to like body care type stuff. This is a gentle foaming hand soap from Bath and Body Works. Sweet cinnamon pumpkin. I also love to have seasonal hand soaps around. I just think it's so fun. These are two Soap and Glory products. So the first one is Rich in Foamus and it was a bleh. It was a body wash. This stuff smells amazing. It has almond, oats, and brown sugar as the scent. I love the packaging. It's really affordable. Like I really, really love Soap and Glory. I, oh, and I love that it has a pump too. That was nice. The only complaint I would have about this is that it didn't lather that well for me. I felt like I had to pump a lot of it into my loofah to get it to lather and that's just personally something that bothers me. I like one that lathers really well but I would probably repurchase this. I don't know just not right away. Now this however is something I really love from the brand. This is the Deep Moisture Body Milk, the Smoothie Star and so this one also has almonds, oats, and brown sugar as the scent. It is so yummy. It smells sweet and good, but it's not too overpowering. So if you want to wear a perfume on top of this, you can. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, I really like it. It's cheap. I would repurchase faux show. Sure. If you watch my perfume collection, you know that I said this would be in an empties very soon. This was a limited edition scent from Jo Malone from back in the day called Ginger Biscuit. I'm sad it's gone. It smells really warm and cozy and sweet, kind of like fresh baked gingerbread or something, but a little bit more sophisticated and wearable. I did see, I think it was on Black Friday, that Jo Malone brought this out again. It said like we're pulling one out of our vault. I don't know if it was just limited edition or what probably, but yeah, I love Jo Malone. Let's talk some skincare. I have this packet of empty face wipes. Up and Up brand makeup remover cleansing towelettes in Evening Calm. So it's meant to be compared to Neutrogena Night Relaxing. These are from Target. They're really cheap and honestly I have tried like Garnier brand. I have tried some of the other like name brand drugstore wipes and even probably slightly more high-end ones from Sephora but these up and up ones I feel like are the best like they're actually super moist in the pack I know that word is like a sketchy word but they they are <laughs> they're actually really wet and they get your makeup off and they smell really nice like I really love these I've repurchased these already and I recommend them this was a single-use sheet mask Dr. Jart water replenishment cotton sheet mask. I'm a fan of Dr. Jart for sure and this was awesome. It was a really big nice sheet mask. It was meant for hydration, water replenishment, and I definitely feel like it did that. I loved it. I'd buy it again. Something I wasn't that crazy about and I actually kind of tossed out before it was even totally done is this. It's from Pixie and it's the Glow Mud Cleanser. Deep purifying cleanser and it has 5% glycolic acid. So this guy is part of their whole glow tonic range or no, I don't know, the glow range. Glow tonic is probably one of the most popular items in that range. 
it smells really good and the packaging's nice, but I just didn't really dig it. This is kind of like a mud consistency, I'll show you. So if you can see that there, it's kind of like a mud, but then it's also like quite moisturizing. It doesn't really like lather up or anything like that. I don't know if my skin just doesn't really agree with glycolic acid or what, but I didn't react that well to the cleanser, the mask, or the toner. I used up the other two, but I didn't react that well. Like I kind of broke out a bit and I kind of just didn't see any like benefits. It wasn't horrible. Like I didn't like break out big time, but it just was like, eh. So I, I dumped it early. Two micellar cleansing waters. This one is from Sephora. It's a green tea micellar cleansing water. This was nice. Uh, it had a pretty strong green tea scent to it. Oh, see, I just put that on my nose. They also had like rose, coconut, pomegranate, I think a few other ones. So maybe those ones are a little bit better or the scent's a little bit more bearable, but I just got kind of sick of smelling this every day because I use it every day to like take off my makeup, pretty much every day. Sometimes I use other things. So I don't think I'd repurchase. But one that I was using before that and I have repurchased and would continue to is the Garnier one. This is the Garnier Skin Active Micellar Cleansing Water All-in-One. This is the one in the pink bottle. I think it's just the original. I believe there's also a waterproof one. Maybe like meant for waterproof mascara. I don't know. Actually, my I don't know. I think there's a green cap and a blue cap too, like sensitive skin maybe and then waterproof. I'm not entirely sure. I really like this. It's a nice big bottle. It's drugstore. It's affordable. Whoops, I dropped it. It doesn't really have a smell to it, but it's effective. Like there's nothing bad to say about it. Kind of on the gross side, but here I have a Clarisonic brush head. I try to be pretty diligent about changing these every three months. My trick to doing that and like reminding myself is that I just happened to start using my Clarisonic in January, like the first time I ever started it. So I always know like January, February, March. Okay, then April, May, June. Then July, do you know what I mean? I don't know. I'm sure you could do that any month that you start using it, but that just helps me. I go in increments of three. Okay, a product that I also used up is this. It's Sunday Riley Good Jeans. So this is a very popular product. It's also very expensive. It is a lactic acid like serum. And so it says right on here, it's for brightening, refining, and plumping. It brightens, exfoliates, plumps lines, evens hyperpigmentation, and increases circulation for instant radiance. So, okay, I'm a little like funny on this product because I really do like Sunday Riley. I also use the Luna Night Oil and the UFO Ultra Clarifying Face Oil. Ultra Clarifying Face Oil. What am I trying to say? This is probably the one that I maybe like the least, but that's only because I feel like I never really saw instant results with it. But when I did like commit to using Sunday Riley products, I used to have like really bad problems with my skin. They kind of just flared up out of nowhere a couple of years ago. I had never had that before. I tried tirelessly to, I tried everything. I was like, uh, it was horrible. So. I tried a lot of skincare products, I tried a lot of this and that, and then for whatever reason, I just somehow stumbled into this Sunday Riley routine, which included, ooh, why am I like a Butterfingers today? I would alternate doing the Good Jeans one night, Luna one night, Good Jeans one night, Luna one night, and I would do the UFO oil every day. And over time, when I was really consistent with it and it took months, I noticed a huge change. Like the breakouts were pretty much gone. I still get them every now and again for sure, but they're not as bad as they were. So now I just like have such more of an appreciation. Do you know what I mean? If you've ever struggled with bad skin, you know what I mean. Like you can appreciate like one or two when it was worse before. But the thing is, it's like I kind of assume it was from being really, really diligent and using those really nice high end skincare products, but I don't know for a fact. I recently, since I've been out of that, I haven't used it for probably a month or so. I did just order a little bit more, like in the, I'll show you. I ordered this kit during the VIB sale. I, these are a little bit smaller bottles. I would have loved to get like the big jumbo bottle of that just because more for your, more bang for your buck. But I'm not convinced if Good Jeans is what is doing stuff for me or if it's more the Luna and the UFO. I definitely feel like I see more instant type results with those two. So I feel like I definitely just went off on a long story with that. I do like that stuff and I do feel like I kind of miss it since I haven't had it for about a month, but I'm just not convinced. And the big bottle is $158, that small bottle. That's not even small, that's just the regular size bottle is 105. 
So it's not something that I just want to be shelling out just because I think it might be working. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I kind of wanted to test my skin without it to see do I actually need that or no. But then I caved and bought this set because it was a little bit cheaper. This is 85 for both products. Granted, they're smaller. Okay, I've talked about this for too long. Good jeans. It is good, but I'm not entirely sure. You should try it. A lot of people like it. Last but not least, I have a little bit of makeup. First is this Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. Uh, everybody has been saying that they must have changed the formula on this because it's a little bit tougher and stiffer than it ever used to be. It's not as good at soaking up water. It's just not as good, and I have to say that I agree. I still use them because, I don't know, they're okay. I like real techniques, and they're cheap, and I got, like, a value pack of them. But it is a bummer because this was, like, a super good drugstore. Not even a dupe for a beauty blender, but close enough. And I do like that flat side where a beauty blender does not have that. I don't love it though, but it's okay, it's good. Urban Decay Chill Makeup Setting Spray. This is in the old packaging as you can see. This stuff is so legit. Urban Decay sprays, they have the finest mist, they work well. This one like boosts your hydration while making your makeup last. I really love it. This is a NARS concealer and this is actually not even all the way done, but I got it in a Sephora Favorites kit and it's just not my color, straight up. So this is the, uh, blah, 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 blah. what is this stuff called? creamy radiant concealer I think and this is in the shade custard which is probably the most common shade but hello I am not the most common shade I am like Nikki tutorials level white pale so I usually need like the lightest shade uh and yeah so I would wear this under my eyes and like on my face a little bit to try to make it work because I really like the formula but then I was like, what are you doing, Katie? Just get rid of it and buy the right shade if you want it. Which I haven't done, but I would consider because this was a really nice, creamy, lightweight, high coverage, blendable formula. Another product that I tossed before I finished was also, I think, from that kit. And it's by Benefit. It's the Cabrow in the shade 3. So this is like a brow pomade. And if you don't know what it is, it has like the brush at the top and then you twist it off and the little pot of pomade is at the bottom. First of all, I've been having a problem with eyebrow brushes lately in general because I use the Dip Brow by Anastasia. If you don't clean this sucker like every day, it gets really caked up and then it makes it really messy when you're applying your brows. Sometimes I'm too lazy to clean it every day. Let's just keep it real here, you know? So that's why like um, powder products or pencil products can be better sometimes, but I do like the look of pomade. However, this one, it got a little too dry at the end. I even tried to add my Makeup Forever Aqua Seal drops, which if you don't know what these are, they're really cool. It's these little drops by Makeup Forever that is supposed to make any makeup you put them into waterproof, but it also helps just bring things back to life. Like I've put these drops in my Dip Brow pomade. I've put them into um, gel eyeliner before. I've put them into ColourPop eyeshadows because they kind of have that weird consistency, cream eyeshadows, things like that, and it'll kind of help revive their life a little bit. Anyway, I put these drops in this. Still didn't really help, and the shade's a little bit too light, so I was just like, again, why am I trying to go through this? That's what I meant when I said my mindset is always like, use up a whole product, use up a whole product, use up a whole product. Like, no. So, it's gone. These two were both good. They're both by L'Oreal. We'll start here. This is the Lash Paradise Voluminous Whatever Mascara in Black is Black. Everybody is talking about this. The packaging kind of looks like Better Than Sex by Too Faced. The brush kind of looks like Better Than Sex by Too Faced. I did like it. It was quite volumizing and lengthening and affordable, but it got really messy real fast. Like I felt like it got clumpy and like messy and kind of how mascaras can get towards the end of their shelf life very quickly and I didn't really like that. There would be big glops all around the top and I would have to like scrape around it. So like I do like it, I would buy it again, but that turns me off enough to like maybe try something else first. This however is pretty much a holy grail product. No it is, it was in my holy grail makeup video, but it's L'Oreal Brow Stylist Plumper Tinted Brow Gel no I'm full of it okay no this is the clear one this is the translucent one uh, what I was gonna say the tinted one it's kind of funny because the tinted brow gel of this is like my holy grail it has like a really nice little fine uh, spoolie and you can just apply it into your brows if you want to do just a natural look and not fill them in but just give a little bit of color and hold the tinted one is awesome for that 
So I figured the translucent would be great as well. And uh, I still like want to love it. There's still a little bit left in here. I almost want to buy this again, but because I love the size of the brush, I love it. I think Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel is the best of the best of the best. However, with the big old spoolie, eh, it can kind of get messy. You know, it can kind of smear my pomade and stuff like that. But this would get gloopy, messy. It didn't hold my brows all that well, and it looked a little bit unnatural, whereas the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel does not do that. It shellacks them without looking shellacked. And then the tinted version of this just like fills in your brows like a natural, beautiful way. So colored, good, translucent, not good in my opinion. So I got rid of this once I finished it up or just about. That about wraps it up. I'm sure this video is still like 20 some minutes long because I talk a lot, my poor boyfriend. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. I'm doing Vlogmas on my channel, so go check that out if you want, or I'm attempting to. We'll see. Daily vlogging can be tough, um, especially because I'm working full time right now. But I'm rambling. What else is new? Have a good day. Have a good night. Have a good life. Thanks for watching. Love you, and I'll see you next time. Everything's weird. Uh, blah, blah, blah.